let's now look at uh, the project cost estimation i'm not calling as uh, project cost management the reason is once you know the estimate then you baseline the estimate then you will compare what is actually happening as you progress in the project when you compare the actuals with the plan then you do some kind of a management but initially you need to have an estimate so let's look at that is also called as project casting project estimation and then you manage it and uh, one thing one need to keep in mind is that first and foremost is that you need to have the project scope in place as what you are going to achieve in that project so that is where or that is what is called the scoping and to perform that you need to have a schedule in in place that is you all break down the uh, activities and then you build up the dependencies look out for the critical path so and then you schedule the project you create gantt chart so that you know after which of the activities need to come first and then um, you sequence them and schedule the project activities and then yes you arrive at the casting or the budget so the first one is the scope of the project then the activity and then it is scheduled and then you come to the casting part of the project if the scope and the schedule is ignored then the casting becomes a challenge so you, the more the clarity on the scope the more you are aware as the what are the activities and how the project schedule is going to look like the casting will be much more effective and uh, everyone will know that okay this is a realistic cast and once you overlook yes you have a risk associated with the casting work so starting with the estimates so one is the effort estimate the amount of uh, amount of time required so each of just as an example if it is something like two days for each of the activities then it is uh, there are five activities then it is 10 man days of effort that is just an example i'm just saying that it's 10 man days of effort and if for 10 man days of effort what is the money required so this may be this is again for the 10 days of effort maybe you might uh, need some missionaries there or you might need missionaries or even consumables might be used and you might also use the consultant or resources so it is based on the missions and the resources then you arrive at the cost the point to note here is that uh, this is as per the PMI survey of uh, 2016 that is project management institute says 53 percent of the project completes on budget that also means this there is scope clarity was not there wrongly because scope clarity was not there it was wrongly estimated uh, and again uh, the scheduling had challenges uh, maybe you thought i mean the project manager thought the activity can complete in a day's time or two days time but it take, took four days that means there is an effort overrun schedule overrun so that incurred more cost so the point again to reiterate half the project only has completed on the budget so which is that means it is poor look so due importance due diligence needs to be given for um, the estimation so the common techniques are the expert judgment top down bottom up analogous estimate and finally three point estimate which is also called PERT program evaluation and review technique most common of them are the expert judgment which is sometimes called Delphi technique and analogous estimates which are most common on the projects so if it is projects yes it is analogous estimate similar projects are expert judgment is what is required in the project if it is a product then it is a totally a different ball game for making a television or for making a mobile phone that is a repetitive process so you know that okay the mobile the cost of making a mobile is uh, maybe uh, ten dollars then yes you can price it them at the selling price including all the overhead 
you can make it sell it for fifty dollars. But whereas project being Unix, being unique, the most common is expert judgment. You assemble the expert and then you arrive at the casting of it based on the scope, based on the schedule. You arrive at the uh, arrive at the cast of making it. So uh, or it could be based on similar project. This is more common in all the civil projects because they'll be using maybe it's a residential uh, apartments it will be cast on per unit and then you uh, make it uh, based on the uh, area required number of units and if it is a commercial project yes if the company has executed a commercial complex yes it's a similar project expert judgment is uh, maybe um, a unique project like um, like maybe space uh, related sending out uh, rocket to space that would involve a kind of a expert judgment um, for the cost analysis so i think now it would have given some clarity as when to do the cost estimation that is after scoping and after scheduling you perform the um, cost estimation there is something called ballpark numbers in the cost estimation which ballpark number is something like you give a high level cost but that will not be a final cost so stay tuned we'll progress let's now look at uh, the contract types and what is a contingency so once um, you estimated the cost um, there are different types of contract types one is the fixed the other one is time and material those are the two primary contract types there could be some kind of a sub-classification within the fixed price and time and material. But generally, yes, you have fixed price contract or time and material. Fixed price, when there is a clear scope clarity, yes, then, then they, you'll know, you. I mean, uh, when there is a vendor and a customer relationship is uh, there between the purchaser and the seller and the scope clarity is there, then they will go for a fixed price contract. 70 to 80 percent of uh, the projects falls under the fixed price uh, deals. The primary reason being, yes, we know this is going to be the uh, pricing of the project. As far as the buyer is concerned and seller is concerned, yes, this is going to be the cost price of uh, their project plus the margin uh, for the seller is going to add that uh, margin plus the cost price for the buyer, yes, uh, the price is going to um, provide to the seller. So once the scope is clear and the schedule is uh, clearly defined, then yes, generally folks go for the fixed price contract. The other type of contract is time and material when scope is not very clear at the start, there could be some kind of an iteration. So which means, um, I mean, they go for uh, time and material, time and material in the sense, okay, they will be just saying that, okay, this is my consultant cost. And if some missionary is going to be involved, okay, per day missionary um, is this much, it's going to, per day missionary cost will be $100 and um, per day per consultant will be something like $200. So how many of our consultant you want, I'll be pricing it accordingly. So the entire risk is shifted from the seller to the buyer in case of time and material. The risk is completely shifted from the buyer to the seller. So the seller needs to have a clear understanding of the scope and he needs to do the complete project management. Um, so that is where the time and material is kind of a, the risk is more on the buyer side rather than the seller side. This type of time and material is very common in the spiral or you call it agile, the scrum methodology, these projects are very common. In fact, time and material, they will go up for a time and material because the scope clarity is not there at the project start. Fixed price, yes, scope clarity is there. Risk is more on the seller rather than the buyer in case of fixed price project. So how, next one is um, assuming if it is a fixed price um, where there is a scope clarity but there is always a risk involved and that is where the seller wants to 
cover that risk. So that is where he is going to add up some price and that price is known as the contingency. So applicable mainly for the fixed price contract and there are two contingencies. One is contingency reserve. So for example, the cost baseline in this case is you have you made the estimate, cost estimate. And if you are a buyer seller relationship, then they will add up the appropriate margin to the which is always um, dictated by or are set by the management. So if it is cost price is 100, they say, okay, 30% is the margin. So 130 will be the um, price cost plus 30% margin. So 130 um, plus the margin, sorry, 100 is the cost estimate plus 30%, which is 130. And a contingency could be like, um, so, uh, so something like there is a risk, is the identified risk but it is not clear on the how much the effort is going to be so in that case yeah they might uh, add up to something like 10 to uh, 15 percent is what generally added up um, so in that case yeah 130 we have arrived at plus some 10 percent will make it to somewhere about 150 so 150 would be the cost baseline which is going to be um, provided cost baseline there is and again this cost everything like contingency uh, reserve is part of the uh, project manager he can have a discretionary power to utilize the contingency reserve on top of it there could be management reserve which is not controlled by the project manager which is unknown risks are identified and efforts are unknown in that case um, it becomes unknown unknown in that case they could be having management uh, reserve so on top of it, 150, they might add another 10%, which is 165 US dollars. So that will be the project budget uh, when the seller is going to um, sell the product. So um, if you look at it, the cost price was somewhere, cost estimate was somewhere about 100, then margin came into play, and then came the contingency reserve, and then came the management reserve. Although the cost estimate was 100, the seller would have added $65 additionally, 100 plus 65, which becomes 165 USD in case of fixed price project. But whereas if the buyer wants to go for a time and material, then yes, cost estimate plus some amount of uh, margin is what uh, or he would just say about uh, the regular consultant per day cost plus the uh, any any kind of a missionary cost is what the seller is going to quote. So only in case of uh, mainly in case of uh, fixed price project, the contingency are added. So underlying two points: one is uh, the fixed price and the diamond material, and then point two is addition of contingency as appropriate to the project. So that gives you an idea as how the cost estimates are done in the project. Thank you.